Okay, here we go. At three hours of the best music you ever heard. C A R O L I N E. Caroline, Caroline, Caroline. One of the great voices of radio broadcasting, Johnny Walker. Hello there. How are you? It's a wonderful occasion, reliving all these wonderful memories, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite amazing that uh, 50 years have gone by. It feels, in a way, like yesterday. It's wonderful that the listeners still remember it and still are interested all these years later. They were very special days. And you broadcast during a very important time for music, the uh, 1967 Summer of Love. Well, yeah, if you look at the years, the real heyday of pirate radio was 64 to sort of 67, 68. But those three years, 64, 5, 6 and 7, if you look back at the charts at that time, the number of fantastic records that were hits at that era many of which maybe wouldn't have been hits were it not for pirate radio. There were a lot of records that um, the BBC didn't want to play because they were too long, like Animals House of the Rising Sun. Uh, so pirate radio changed the way that radio sounded in this country. It changed the music charts and that it gave a chance to so many groups that perhaps we would not have heard of without the pirates. And, and it changed the record business too. Before 64, there were four major record companies completely dominated the market. And they were quite conservative, really, in the, in the groups that they would sign. And then once Pirate Radio came on the air, a huge number of independent labels sprung up. I mean, Island Records started thanks to Pirate Radio. So everything happened all together at the same time, really. The huge explosion of music and all the great new groups. Young people had their own fashion, thanks to Carnaby Street. Art was fantastic. And then the invention of the transistor radio. I remember when I was a kid and I used to have to carry the radio down on our summer holidays and it was a huge, great heavy thing, weighed a ton, huge, great big batteries, you know, the old-fashioned valve radios. So all of those things came together, really, to make, you know, Pirate Radio the success that it was. And you joined Pirate Radio in 1966? You've done your homework, haven't you? Yeah, I was actually in Birmingham when the Pirates started with Caroline Easter 64 and I was still pursuing a career in the motor trade. I was a motor mechanic, then I became a salesman. And then and I started DJing in clubs and ballrooms and things around Birmingham. And I remember my boss one Friday said, you cannot do two jobs. You've got to choose between having a proper career in the motor trade, being a salesman available to see customers in the evening, or this disc jockey nonsense. I'll give you two weeks to think it over. And I said, well, I don't need two weeks. I'll give you the answer now. I'll be a disc jockey, thank you very much. So I said, do you want me to work a week's notice? He said, no, you can go tonight. So that was it. I was out of work. My dad was very unhappy about that. But funny enough, that was a Friday evening. The next day, Saturday, the Daily Mirror ran an article about a news station called Radio England that was supposedly going to show all the others how it should be done. And uh, Monday, I called up the Daily Mirror, found out where the Radio England people were, which was in the Hilton Hotel, called the Hilton and got through to them and they said send me a tape so I quickly made a tape up that evening and then the next day Tuesday I thought well rather than put it in the post and have the danger it'll be lost or ignored I'll take it down to the Hilton so I got on the train from Birmingham went to London went to the Hilton Hotel knocked on the door and said here I am here's my tape and within 20 minutes I got a job. What was it like during the actual time itself? I mean, what was it like being on the boat for like 10 days at a time? Well, we used to do two weeks on. We do a week where we do our own show, three-hour show. Mine was nine to midnight. And then the second week, we'd stand in for the DJ who was on leave. So that would be Mike Ahern used to do the nine to 12 show. So I do two shows a day, six, six hours radio, which is a wonderful apprenticeship to learn about radio. You know, you'd never get the chance to do that in this day and age. So for that week... To be on the radio six hours a day, that's, that's quite a big chunk of the day already. And then the rest of the time, we'd be going, I'd go through the library, choosing records to play, uh, opening up all the hundreds and hundreds of letters we used to get. And then in the summertime, often, we'd, if the weather was good, we'd sunbathe on the top deck. And That film, The Boat That Rocked, many of the DJs say, well, it was not a very accurate portrayal of life on the ship, which it wasn't. It was very romanticised, really. But there was one scene I remember when Philip Seymour Hoffman is playing a DJ called The Count, sitting on a deck chair on the deck, looking wistfully out to the ocean, and this young lad says to him, well, what's the matter, what, you know? He said, well, he said, I've just realized we're having the greatest days of our life, and it's not gonna last. That was very accurate. It, it was wonderful, wonderful days. 
And of course, from the time they came on in 1964, the politicians were constantly saying, we're going to put them off the air, we can't have pirate radio, it's just, you know, completely ungovernable and unlicensed. And they said so many times they were going to put us off the air. We never really believed it would happen. But then when they announced the Marine Offences Act in 1967, it, it seemed to be serious that time. Most of the stations said they carry on broadcasting, including Radio London. And then eventually, I think, when they figured it out, that they wouldn't be able to run any commercials, so there'd be no income. It was quite expensive to keep a ship out to sea to supply it with diesel and crew and food and everything. But um, Ronald O'Reilly decided he wanted to keep Radio Caroline going. And I thought, I really loved the station. Uh, I loved its listeners. I loved the music we played. And I thought, well, if Caroline's going to keep going, I'd like to be a part of it. So I decided to, to continue, really. And that reminds me of when the Marine Offences Act was first published, I think you made a very famous speech. Yeah, Radio London closed down on the afternoon of Monday, August 14th. And then we decided we'd carry on. So at midnight, that was the end of Radio Caroline being sort of legal, not illegal. The station could never be made illegal because it was in international waters. It became illegal for a British subject to work on it. So when I made that announcement to an estimated audience around Europe of about 22 million listeners, which was incredible, I then became a criminal, really, for playing records. This is a story of man's fight for freedom. The beginning is in the past, the middle is now, the end is in the future. It is a story of sadness and of triumph. August the 14th, as disc jockeys Robbie Dale, Johnny Walker and Ross Brown leave Liverpool Street, London. Spurred on toward the sea by the hundreds of cheering people. See them now as they stand on the tender. There are tears in their eyes as their families, their homes and their loved ones are left behind. Three o'clock on this Monday afternoon and on 266, Big Lil is heard for the last time. Caroline is alone. These three men prepare for midnight. For in a few hours' time, they are to challenge the might and the power of the British government. They will become criminals. Midnight approaches. It is August the 15th. Johnny Walker announces that Caroline belongs to you, that she loves you and she will continue. The Beatles sing all you need is love. These two men sound happy, but underneath they are sad. For well, they now know that they have passed the point of no return. They are not sad for long. They are joined by other men who also gave up so much to fight for freedom. The seas are rough and cruel. Life is hard. But as each day passes, the moment of triumph grows nearer. The British people rally round. They send food. They send comfort. And they send their love. All you need is love. And love overcomes. The British government relent. Caroline raises a rancor and heads for England. See her now majestically and proudly sailing up the river toward the capital that has welcomed so many victors in British history. But none as victorious as these men. They stand on the deck waving to the millions of people who line the Thames. This time the tears flooding from their eyes are tears of happiness. The insurmountable odds have been surmounted. They reunite with their families with their friends, with their loved ones. We are near the end of our story. London's skyline has a new landmark pointed toward the heavens. Caroline's Ariel, at last beaming out its love and music to a free and peaceful nation. We have overcome. The battle is over. Free radio becomes a way of life, but never taken for granted. For no man will ever forget, Monday, August the 14th, 1967. Everybody told me not to do it and I was crazy, and, but I just thought it's the right thing to do. And it's quite nice that really 50 years later people still remember that and say, well, thanks, thanks for keeping it going and, and having a go, you know. And many presenters here, I'm sure, remember their time through certain favourite records. I was wondering if there was a favourite record that pretty much summed up your heyday in Pipe Radio. Well, there's so many, it's very hard to choose just one. I think if I had to choose one, it'd be the one we played at midnight on the 14th, which was the Beatles' All You Need Is Love. And one of the first records Caroline played was a Beatles song, so it seemed very fitting that really, as we went into this new era of Caroline after midnight on the 14th, we should play a Beatles song. So All You Need Is Love brings all that back to me vividly. And I think that sums up Pirate Radio very well.
Thank you very much. Very kind of you. And good luck to you and all you do. The Yard Birds on Caroline and for your love. By the way, thanks to everybody who writes in and says, good on you, Caroline, for defeating the British government and keeping going. And you can uh, depend on us. We're going to be here forever. Now, anybody listening in their car, if you fancy driving towards Frinton, Frinton on Sea in Essex, uh, the sea has calmed down tonight. It was that influence of Benny King earlier on, I think. So I might just try getting out on the deck at about half past 11. So stick your cars around Frinton, point your lights towards the sea, and get some of those headlights flashing. In the old days, we used to be able to see the lights of uh, Radio London, just a little way away from the ship. But uh, now the Mi Amigo and Caroline, we're out here on our own. Broadcasting three and one half miles off the Frinton Essex coast, with offices based in Paris, New York, Amsterdam and Toronto, this is Radio Caroline International on 259 metres in the medium wave band. And what do we get instead? BBC Radio 1? It went off at 7 o'clock tonight. They've all gone to bed. (laughs) 